Anne of Green Gables, um, our POC's annual play. I'm Lily Rivera, the stage manager. Um, this play is based on a book written by L.M. Montgomery and directed by wonderful Miss Kathy Pither. Um, the time and place is the early 1900s on Prince Edward's Island in Canada. And it goes over a period of four years where everybody in the play kind of grows up and we have an amazing cast this year, probably one of the best. We've all come together to work so hard to put on this production, and we hope you enjoy, and thank you for coming. As I live and breathe, Matthew Cuthbert in his Sunday suit on a weekday. Where is he going and why? I'm clean puzzled and won't know a moment's peace till I ask Marilla. If you want my opinion, which I'm sure you don't, that brother of hers is the oddest fellow in all Canada. Can't get a blessed word out of him. Marilla! Come in, Rachel. Believe I knew she'd be right over. I believe I'll set a spell. Fine evening, isn't it? Fine, fine. How's the family? Fine, fine. Marilla Cuthbert, where for heaven's sake was Matthew going in that buggy? I thought you'd never ask. Matthew was going to the station in Bright Rivers for adopting a young boy from the orphan asylum in Nova Scotia. Marilla Cuthbert, I think you're actually serious. Of course. The boy's coming on the train. Adopting a boy? An old man and a bachelor? My arms are black and blue from pinching myself, so I can't be dreaming. It's real! I'm going to live on Prince Edward Island with the family of my very own, and maybe even a best friend. Marilla Cuthbert, whatever put such a notion into your head? Matthew and I have been thinking it over a while. We decided to take in a young boy, about 12 or so. Nothing will ever surprise me again. Nothing. Matthew's getting up in years. His heart troubles him now and again. And besides, finding reliable help is near to impossible. Lord, isn't that the awful truth, if you want my opinion? We sent word for Mrs. Spencer to bring us a nice Canadian lad, old enough to be useful and young enough to be brought up proper. If no one comes tonight, I think I'll stay in that wild cherry tree, all white with bloom in the moonlight. Marilla, you're doing a mighty foolish thing bringing a strange child to your home. I don't deny I've had some qualms. Marilla Cuthbert, I just heard of a case in New Brunswick where an asylum child put strychnine and well, the whole family died in fierce agonies. Only it was a girl in that instance. We're not getting a girl. I never dream of taking a girl to bring up. Don't say I didn't warn you. What those two know about children will fill a thimble. This will make a sensation! Good evening to you, sir. I suppose the 5.30 train will be along soon? Nope. 5.30's been and gone. Half an hour ago. But I'm expecting a, a little... little girl. She's sitting right there. It's a boy I've come for. Mrs. Spencer was to bring a boy over from Nova Scotia. Mrs. Spencer stepped off the train with that girl. Said you'd be along presently. A boy is what we asked for. Sorry, Mr. Cuthbert. There's only one orphan on the premises. I don't understand. <laughs> I wish Marilla was here now. Maybe they're out of the brand of boy you wanted, but she can explain. That young one's got a tongue on it. <laughs> I can't ask her why she's not a boy, or tell her there's some mistake. <sighs> can't just leave her at the station. Best take the child home for now, and let Marilla do the explaining. I suppose you're Matthew Cuthbert of Green Gables? I'm glad to meet you. I was afraid I might have to sleep in that cherry tree. I'm sorry I'm late. It seems so wonderful that I'm going to live with you. I've never belonged to anybody before. Not really. I'll, I'll, I'll take your suitcase, miss. Buggy's over yonder. Oh, I can manage. Not very heavy. Step right in, miss. Think of all the rest <coughs> to find out. Makes me glad to be alive in such an interesting <laughs> world. Get a move on, Pearl. I just love writing. Mr. Cuthbert? What do those white lacy blossoms remind you of? Well, no, I don't know. A bride, maybe, with a misty veil. But nobody'd ever want to marry me, except a foreign missionary, who can't be too particular. <laughs> well, no, uh, I wouldn't say that. Though I'd love a dress with puff sleeves. Never had a pretty dress before, that I can remember. So what's more to look forward to, isn't it? 
Well, no, I suppose it is. Am I talking too much? People always tell me I do. I can stop when I decide to, although it's very difficult. Talk as much as you like. I don't mind. Truth is, I sort of like her chatter. You and I are going to be kindred spirits, indubitably. People laugh at me for using big words, but if you have big ideas, you need big words to express them. Well, now, I suppose that's reasonable enough. Right now, I'm almost perfectly happy. Though I can't be totally perfectly happy because, well, what color would you call this? It's red, ain't it? Nobody with red hair can be perfectly happy. The freckles, the green eyes, I can imagine them away, but I cannot imagine the red hair away. It will be my lifelong sorrow. Well, I don't know about that. Mr. Cuthbert! Mr. Cuthbert! They call this the Avenue. Right pretty place, the Avenue. They should call it... White Way of Delight. Well, no, never would have thought of that. I always name the things I love. We're coming pretty near home now. Home? To think of coming to a real home. Mr. Cuthbert! Barry's Pond. And here's Green Gables. Whoa! I'm going to shut my eyes tight. Oh, it's like a dream. I can hear a brook running, listen to the trees talking. Are you coming? I'm afraid so. <laughs> this way. Matthew, where's the boy? There is no boy, only her. There must be. We sent word for Mrs. Spencer to bring us a boy. Well, she didn't. Mrs. Spencer delivered a girl. Mercy sakes, this is a fine kettle of fish. You don't want me because I'm not a boy? I should have known it was too beautiful to last. <laughs> is she plumped out or what? Well, no, not exactly. And what am I supposed to do? Don't rightly know. Child, no need to take on so. You'd cry too if you were an orphan or rubbing some place you thought was home, only to discover they didn't want you either. Don't get in fever over it. We're not going to turn you out tonight. What's your name, child? Anne Shirley. But please call me Cordelia. Anne is such an unromantic name. Fiddlesticks. Anne is a good, plain, sensible name. If you must call me Anne, please call me Anne spelled with an E. What difference does it make how it's spelled? Simple old A-N-N -N looks dreadful, but A-N-N-E looks ever so much more distinguished. Very well, then Anne spelled with an E. Can tell me how this mistake came to be made. Were no boys available? An abundance. But Mrs. Spencer distinctly said you wanted a girl. <coughs> Never should have trusted that Mabel Spencer to... Well, sit down to supper. If I was five years old, with beautiful nut brown hair, then would you keep me? We know use for a girl on the farm. We want a boy. You're not eating? Can you eat when you're in the depths of despair? I've never been in the depths of despair, so I can't say. I say that to comfort myself. Don't see where the comfort comes in. Guess she's tired, Marilla. Best put her to bed. Come, child. This is where you sleep for tonight. Andres Cook can go to bed. I suppose you have a nightgown? Just sold cotton, but I pretend it's flowing silk. Never mind, it's simple to me about clothes too much. <laughs> well, this is a pretty piece of business. First thing tomorrow, I send word for Mrs. Spencer. That child goes back to the asylum. Yes, I suppose so. You suppose so, don't you know? Well, she's a real nice little thing, Marilla. Matthew Cutford, you mean to say we ought to keep her? Well, no, not exactly. What good would she be? I suppose not. What good would she be to us? Well, we might be of some good to her. Matthew Cuthbert, I believe the child has bewitched you. She's such an interesting little person, Marilla. You should have heard her talking coming from the station. I don't want an orphan girl. She goes right back to where she came from. I could hire a farm boy to help. The girl would be company for you. I'm not suffering for company. Good night, Matthew. Well, now, it's just as you say, Marilla. By morning, I wasn't in the depths of despair anymore. That's why mornings are so splendid. This morning, I imagined I was a bee living in an apple blossom. Can you imagine doing the dishes? That's more to the point. <laughs> I'm better at looking after children. Too bad you don't have any. I have more than I need for the present, thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Hammond had eight. Twins three times in succession was too much. And I told her so when the last pair came. As you bent on talking, tell me what you know about yourself. I used to imagine. Just stick to the bald back me, please. Well, after my folks died of the fever, nobody really wanted me. Stayed till I was eight, looking after children. But Mr. Thomas got drunk once too often. 
was killed falling under a train, so Mrs. Thomas moved back home. I don't think I'm following all this. Very simple. Her folks didn't want me either. That's when Mrs. Hammond said she'd take me, seeing as I was handy with children. <laughs> then how'd you come to be at the asylum? After Mrs. Hammond's husband ran off, she parceled out the twins and shipped me off to the asylum. Were they good to you, these women? Oh, they meant to be. But of course, the asylum was full up, so they didn't want me. But I stayed three months, till Mrs. Spencer came. Well, they're coming for you now. Get your things. And who's that with her? Mrs. Spencer? That stingy, mean-tempered. Hello, Miss Cuthbert. How are you, Anne? As well as can be expected. Miss Spencer, there's been a strange mistake somewhere. We sent word for you to bring us a boy. My sincere apologies. I was expressly told Miss Cuthbert and her brother wished to adopt a girl. Puzzles me how a friend could have a switch like that. Well, the asylum will take her back, won't they? Frankly, I don't think that'll be necessary. Mrs. Blewett was telling me how much she wanted a girl. Got a heap of squalling youngins. Can hardly keep any help. I think Anne will be the very girl for her. Now I call it providential. It's positively providential. I suppose nobody deserves Mrs. Blewett. Had to fire three separate girls last month. This week, two more up and quit on me. I think Anne here will be the fair girl for you, Mrs. Blewett. Come here, girl. Have you got a name? Anne? Surely. Hmm. Don't appear as if there's much to you. But you're wiry. Sometimes the wiry ones are the best. If I take you in, you'll have to be a good girl. Yes, ma'am. Good and smart and respectful, too. I expect you to earn your keep. Make no bones about that. Then it's settled. Yes, I suppose I can take off your hands. The baby's awful fractious, and I'm clean wore out. If you'd like, I can fetch her home now. Get your things, girl. Well, I, I don't know. What's that? I hadn't said Matthew, and I had absolutely... But Mrs. Spencer said... I said Matthew and I hadn't absolutely decided. Matthew is of a mind to keep her. You mean I come all this way for no good reason? Should we choose not to keep her, we'll bring her over tomorrow night. Will that suit you, Mrs. Blewett? Suppose it'll have to, Miss Cuthbert. Wasted a whole morning. Evening, Miss Cuthbert. Sorry about the mix-up. Sorry, Mrs. Blewett. Guess I misunderstood again. Oh, Miss Cuthbert, you mean you'll really let me stay at Green Gables? Isn't decided yet. I'd rather go back to the orphanage than live with Mrs. Blewett. I'll do anything you want, if only you'll keep me. Put your things away, and don't let the flies in. Saw Mrs. Spencer drive off. Yes. What's that Mrs. Blewett doing hereabouts? Mrs. Blewett wanted to take Anne. I wouldn't give a mangy dog to that Blewett woman. <laughs> it's that or keep the child ourselves. Seems sort of a duty. Well, now? I suppose I'm willing to give it a try, since you're so set on it, for a few months anyways. A sort of experiment. Experiment, yes. Whatever you say, Marilla. I may make a terrible mess of things, but if you want, the girl can stay on a temporary basis. I reckon you'd come to see it in that light, Marilla. She's such a bright little thing. More to the point, she's a useful little thing. But I'll see to it that she's trained up proper. Fine. That's fine, Marilla. And don't go in fear of my methods. You let me manage her. Fine, Marilla. You can do the bringing up. I guess an old maid knows more than an old bachelor. Well, now, the child will need schooling. She's a smart one. I'll start her off in study school. And she can go to Avonlea in the fall, if she stays. She'll need clothing, pretty dresses and such. I don't believe in pampering vanity. I'll make her simple school dresses. Well now, just be good and kind as you can, without spoiling her, of course. What happens if you do mess up? <coughs> don't go sticking your whore in. Okay. You gonna tell her tonight? Heavens no, she wouldn't sleep a wink. Marilla Cuthbert, you put your hands to the plow and there's no looking back. And to think Matthew should be behind it all. Good night, bubbling brook. Apple blossoms. I always say good night to the things I love. But it's no use loving Green Gables if you have to be torn away. It's high time you said your prayers and got to bed. Why can't you go into a grain field, look up into the blue sky, and just feel a prayer? As humbly for what you want, thank God for your blessings. Gracious Heavenly Father, please let me stay at Green Gables, and please, please let me be good-looking when I grow up. <laughs> I remain yours respectfully, and Shirley. Well, maybe not meant to do better. 
Oh, Miss Cuthbert, please tell me if you're going to send me away. I can't bear not knowing. Well, Matthew and I have decided to keep you for the time being, as long as you manage to behave yourself. I'll try, but it will be uphill work. <laughs> Mrs. Thomas said I was desperately wicked. Can I call you Aunt Marilla? Plain Marilla will do. It'd make me feel as if I really belong to you. I'm not your aunt. We can imagine. I prefer to see things just as they are. <laughs> oh, Miss Cuthbert. I mean, Marilla. How much you miss! You'll never control that imagination if you're here to stay. Now go to sleep and give your tongue a rest. <laughs> Of all the things that will or ever will be, an old maid and a bachelor taking in a total stranger. She's been there for weeks, and I yet to lay eyes on the creature. A kind of my laryngitis. Marilla! Come in, Rachel. Heard about the mistake. Couldn't you send her back? I suppose, but Matthew took her fancy to her right off, and I sort of like her myself. Though she has her faults, Lord knows. We decided to give it a fair try. A sort of an experiment. Pure insanity is what I say. Place is cheerful already. You never know what she'll say next. I found a spring in the woods near the maple trees. And this is Mrs. Lynn. Well, I didn't pick you out of your looks, that's sure and certain. She's terribly skinny and homely, Marilla. Come here, child, and let me take a look at you. Lawful heart, did anyone ever see such freckles? And hair as red as carrots. I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! How dare you call me skinny and ugly? How dare you call me freckled and redheaded? You are a rude and impolite woman. Anne, how would you like to be told that you're dull and clumsy and probably don't have a spark of imagination? I don't care if I do hurt your feelings. You hurt mine worse than ever, and I'll never forgive you. Never! Never! Did anyone ever see such a fit of temper? Anne, go to your room and stay there till I come. Oh! I don't envy your job bringing that thing up. You shouldn't have spoken so blunt about her looks, Rachel. Marilla Cuthbert, upholding such a frightful display of temper? I'm not trying to excuse Anne. She's been very naughty and needs a good talking to. Well, if you want my advice, which I'm sure you don't, do that talking with a sturdy switch. Exceptions must be made, Rachel. She's never been taught what's right. My, yes. The tenor feelings of orphans must be considered above all else. You were too hard on her. You'll have trouble with that young one. It seems her temper matches her hair. Wait till Bertha McPherson hears this. Anne, get up this minute and listen to me. I am ashamed you've no right to fly into such a fury. She had no right to call me ugly and redheaded. I'm not saying Mrs. Lynde is right, but Rachel is my oldest friend and you'll tell her you're sorry. Lock me up in a dark, damp dungeon with snakes and toads. Feed me bread and water, but I can never ask Mrs. Lynde to forgive me. Dungeons are rather scarce in Avonlea, but you'll tell her you're sorry. I can't even imagine I'm sorry. Perhaps your imagination will improve by morning. <laughs> She'll get a meal regular. I don't believe in starving people into good behavior. Anne? Anne? Are you making it, Anne? I feel so ashamed. Rachel Lynn is a meddlesome old gossip. Serves her right. When I woke this morning, I wasn't angry anymore. Well now, Anne, just do it right off and have it over with. You mean apologize to Mrs. Lint? It'll have to be done sooner or later, Anne. Marilla's a dreadful, determined woman. Just send me back to the orphanage. It's too humiliating. No, don't say that. You mean you really want me to stay? Well, the kitchen's a fearful, lonesome place without you, Anne. Oh, Matthew, I'd do anything for your sake. Just go smooth it over, so to speak. That's a good girl. I shall tell Marilla that I have at last repented. But don't tell her I said anything. I swear. She might think I was putting my oar in when I promised not to. Marilla! <laughs> yes? I'm sorry I lost my temper, and I'm willing to tell Mrs. Lynde. Very well then, Miss Shirley. We'll go this minute before you change your mind. Don't say anything too startling. Good day, Rachel. Oh, Mrs. Lynde, never could I express all my sorrow, even if I used up a whole dictionary. I've disgraced the dear friends who let me stay at Green Gables. Even though I'm not a boy, I deserve to be cast out by respectable people forever and ever and ever. 
<laughs> well, she's certainly enjoying herself. <laughs> well, maybe what I said was harsh. Every word was true. Oh, Mrs. Lind, say you'll forgive me, or you'll inflict lifelong grief on a poor orphan girl. Was that too startling? <laughs> there, there, get up, child. Of course I forgive you. I'm such an outspoken person, Anne. You mustn't mind me. I once knew a girl that was hair as red as yours. Once she grew up, it turned into a handsome auburn. Oh, Mrs. Lynch, you have given me a ray of hope. <laughs> <laughs> she may just turn out all right. Mrs. Lynch, do you think I'll find a best friend in Avonlea? You know, a kindred spirit, like Matthew. There's Diana Barry, but, though her mother's awful particular. I told Miss Barry to be sending you after an apron pattern, so you'll be meeting Diana after all. How splendid! Thanks, Marilla! Just don't let Mrs. Barry hear about your imaginary friends. She might think you're soft in the head. About time, that childhood of life playmate. <laughs> I'm trembling with fear. What if Diana doesn't like me? That would be the most tragical disappointment of my life. And don't use all those long words. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you like books. This one's thr thrilling. The heroine has five lovers. I'd be thankful with just one lover, wouldn't you? The heroine has terrible troubles and faints all the time. I wish I could faint, don't you, Diana? It's so romantic.